Okay, uh, welcome to the September meeting of the Planning Commission for the Village of Southampton. I uh, just want to mention at the beginning, um, we're joined tonight by Ed Cargan, yes. who's our new um, member of the com commission. Uh, just a few items to start. We, um, we've been discussing for several months a series of proposals on zoning, um, and um, the village attorney is um, in the middle of uh, doing a draft of that of a proposed code based based on those, which I assume we'll have in time for the next meeting. If we have it in time, we'll post it on the village website for everyone to see see the draft, um, and that will obviously be a major topic of our next um, meeting. Uh, we thought it was time to move it into some some real language for us to look at. I mean, my hope would be that we can get through that in a month or two and then move it on to the tr trustees for action um, so that that will come to a finish. I didn't, I mean, I'm, I'm right. working to discuss right. that later, right. but I didn't know if we had fully come to a conclusion on all these various recommendations. So let me tell you what I have. I have ten that mm -hmm. we so I thought we had general agreement to move forward and maybe I'll just read those. I'm just, this is a review for the beginning of the meeting. Um, one is, um, and again, what we, what we ended up doing was saying, let's go forward and do language based on this, and then we can always decide to, to, um, to, to uh, ch change it, but it'll give us a place to start. First was include accessory buildings and gross floor area cal cal calculation. Uh, de detached garages up to 520 square feet continue to be exempted as they are in the current code. Um, second, modify site setbacks to maximum 60% of allowable building width, 15 foot min, min, minimum. And I know we have, there's some concern that, that uh, Studio AB is checking that in some of the very small zones, the 15 feet might be hard to achieve. Um, they're going to check that, but in the minimum, in, in the meanwhile, we thought we'd get this in draft form. Um, in R80 and R120 zones, Modified site setbacks for primary structures to be the same as ex accessory structures, which is really just a cleanup item. No one's, no one seems to know how it got worded the way it does now, where a primary building can come further than an accessory building can, which makes no sense. Um, fourth, require removal of cesspools and enhanced treatment of wastewater for all new construction and any re renovation that increases the number of bed bedrooms. Um, the reason for the number of bed bedrooms is, I think, as Mark pointed out, um, that's how the county looks at it. Right. Um, so we thought we'd come into compliance. <clears throat> um, lot, number five, lot coverage. Replace current language re with the requirement that 65% be vegetated. Uh, Studio B, A, B did, 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 did do some calculations, and they thought that was correct. That was the right per percentage. Um, six, driveways must be constructed with permeable or porous materials. Um, seven, any building permit must provide that all drainage be retained on site. Um, eight, allow up to 25% relief from the pyramid law on side elevations for superior design with ARB uh, pr pr uh, approval maintaining privacy for neighboring property will be required. Um, we spent some time um, with um, um, with Glennis Barry from Studio AB. She saw she thought fifty percent was too big a exemption, which is I guess the same thing we heard from the ARB members at the last meeting, the August meeting. Yes. Um, eight. Um, I'm sorry. Nine. Limit flap roofs above twenty seven feet to five percent of the roof area. Um, 10, require a certificate of appropriateness for demolition of any building constructed before 1940. Applicant must file a report that reviews history and why they believe it is not a contributing bid building. Um, then we also discussed the dark side sky pro provision. We are, we are waiting to get some sample language from other towns <coughs> in terms of how they've, how they've done that. So that's the list. Um, and I think all of them will no doubt have some uh, some conversation, but we thought we should probably get it into a little language so we can talk about it more specifically. I think the, the, to require the enhanced uh, treatment for the new uh, uh, for new construction or major alterations puts us in, in, in a leadership position, you know, in the 
in, certainly in the county and the state, to require this. And I think that it's extremely important for Long Island, you know, that you know, this enhanced treatment protects, you know, the water supply. Right. The um, you know, the two that I think are most important, well, two issues. One on the side yard, which I think I said before, I think is right. really critical. Yep. I think you know, 15 feet is great and closer to what some of the other towns and villages are right. doing. Right. Um, I think we, what that actually means, because the 60-40 is what we have right now, so that's not a right. change. Right. Right. Um, we might. I would just suggest we might want to just look and see how all that works, because if if people can go back to the 64 anyway, it ends up being no change. So right, it could easily end right. up being basically not a change. Right, right. So we want to, I think, and I just think from all the work we've done over the past months, um, the more I've looked at these new houses going in, it's really just the encroachment on right. neighbors and the reduction of kind of vegetation mm -hmm. around the house. Right. And then the other thing I know that we didn't, we had kind of talked about what never came up in a recommendation was just with front yards, because that has is still a problem in some of the properties. Right. I think what we've, and certainly we, you know, it'd be great to have someone propose something. Well, the, the problem we've found is it's been very hard to come up with language that covers all the different circumstances. So you have some streets where people are building too far back, and it's disrupting the way the rhythm of the street. You have other streets where people are building too far forward. It's been very hard to find more something that would, you know, seems to to, to cover everything. So, you so know, I, had, I mean, the suggestion I had heard was right. that it was an average of houses left and right. Like uh -huh. Take two houses, three houses, but you right. know, some number of houses, and then take that average. Uh huh. And then maybe okay. you can give a band right. within that, so you can be plus or minus some right. Right. amount. Of yeah, I agree that I think that the front yard on the smaller lots, right. our requirements are too stringent. On the small currently. lots, currently, right. Yes. Right. it sets the house, you know, too far well, back, and then it forces the, the person or the developer to to then try to cheat some other areas. And right. it's not well, the problem is that the regulation, as it stands, doesn't necessarily relate to the condition. It right. just has to do with Correct. the zone. Yes. And it's doesn't. It's well, not. It's an inexact. Right. Thing. Right. 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 So that I mean, those okay. those were the things that I had been. Right. That were kind of really critical, and a lot of the rest of this work I think is right. great. Yeah. Yes. Participating here. Yes. yes. Uh, Could you state your name? Oh, I'm sorry. I did that first. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, my name is Bruce Parkman. I live on Halsey Neck Lane. I'm a right. resident of the village. I just want to. And I'm, I'm a director of the Southampton Association, mm -hmm. as, as you all know. And what we've been working on since uh, the consultant's report is really going through it quite thoroughly and trying to determine what uh, we liked and where we thought, uh, you know, there might be alternatives that were more acceptable. But in general, I have to say that village consultant that you had, I think we think did a just superb job. I mean, it was Thank professional, you. thorough, and it was unemotional, and it was, I think it was just right. fabulous. But, so out of this, we, right. the Southampton Association has come up with 10 points, a uh, 10-point zoning plan that we think are the things that are generally the, the most important. And I'm glad to see that we probably coincided about, yeah. you know, clearly in the majority of this, right. maybe even more, with some slight variations. Not expecting to go through this as a discussion. Right. We just wanted you to see the work that we had mm -hmm. done, the summary and the results of the work that we had right. done. And uh, we'd be very happy at any point in time, and I'm sure we'll all have the opportunity to do it, uh, to bring in uh, our, our, our team and our consultants, own consultants, to discuss any of these yes. in detail as, as you see fit. That would be really good, I think, maybe yeah, our next yeah. meeting. Right, we can, we can plan yeah. on that. Yeah, I think we'd like and, to. Uh, because I think yeah. this, we, we put a lot of thought into this, and you know, there's probably a compromise or two. Mm -hmm. uh, my own personal thing, I think the front yard and the side yard and the lot coverage are what I really be concerned mm -hmm. about. Overriding everything I think in the future of this village is the water issue. Yes. And I don't think you know, I don't think we should limit this to new construction. I think almost every house in the village should be required to upgrade their yes. system over the course of a five to eight year period. That, that would be absolutely that's where I think we ought to we ought to go. And uh, I'll tell you a story. I've got a just 
So I understand some of the issues around that. I've got five septic systems in my property. And I wanted to upgrade one of them, and they wouldn't let me upgrade one of them unless I did all five, which turned it into a very, very expensive proposition. Yeah, right. And uh, there's things like that that I think we've got to look into as to how to make it possible for people to do this, to afford it, but to get it done over time, because everything else is nice, but that's, this one's really important. I think that here on your list, I think the very good suggestions are relating to the process. You know, where there is also an improvement that needs right. to be done in terms of the process. Right. Yes. That, uh, you know, and, and, and I like the one where you have that uh, increased penalties for practitioners and owners who violate the rules. Right. I think there should be more right. of, uh, mm -hmm. right. you know, penalties right. in case you do. And not just, uh, yeah, there's a number of situations where the penalties are just a cost of doing business and it's minor. <laughs> right, right. right. You know, count right. on the building. And right. But anyways, I just, we just wanted to submit this because we knew you were, you know, the stages you were at and right. wanted you to know that we have a real interest and a thorough interest and we hope a professional interest will have an opportunity to discuss it once more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And there's an extra copy. Great. Thank you. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Come on, boy. So that's great. Thank you very much. I think um, if you could bring them to the next yep. we'll, public meeting we'll and... Right um, We'll get also uh, get this to Studio B A A B so they can look at it and respond. And I might try to get Gwyneth to our next meeting. That'd be great. Part of the next step. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Um, so uh, we've heard a lot in the last few meetings, and there's obviously been a lot of discussion in the village about um, trees and vegetation and. Um, I think a trend everyone's seen where two things are happening. One is a lot of very large older trees are being taken down. Um, and then secondly, um, a process that for, I'll give a very unscientific name to, it, what, what I call clear cutting, um, where um, someone building a new house basically cleans, clear, clears out the entire site. Um, and then re re uh, re re landscapes after that. And there's a lot of concern both about the trees coming down, but also about the extent to which clear clear cutting is really changing the 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 feel of the um, village. So a number of um, pe people had uh, had 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 organized a group and submitted a proposal to the trustees. I guess two months ago. Um, which they also discussed at a uh, public hearing of the planning commission, um, which called for, uh, was very uh, de detailed and called for um, any, basically any re removal of tree or um, change of more than 30% of the landscape to go through a public review process. Um, the trustees have asked us to uh, comment on it. Um, what I have to, to tonight for people to look at is a, um, I, I would call it probably a streamlined version, um, which um, both just, try, I tried to reduce the number of um, parties involved, for, first of all, um, to make it as simple as possible with, with basically the ARB really being the party looking at the plan. Um, and then says, say, Secondly, um, what I would say is um, this is probably um, next to um, beach parking, um, probably beach um, cars driving on the beach, probably got the most public comment of any item in the village in the last few years. Um, and it's been very split uh, between people who are very concerned about trees coming down and others who feel like they're, they're a private pro pro property owner and they should have the right to do what they want. So what I tried to do here as a draft was maybe somewhere in the middle, which was to say that any time you apply for a building permit, um, this would apply. And obviously, there are advantages and disadvantages to, to that approach. Um, basically, what I've done here is said, um, if you, when you're applying for a new building permit, uh, number one, you, you cannot, at that point, um, remove any um, tree, uh, any large caliper tree or change more than 30% of the um, vegetation on the site without, pr without pro preparing a landscape plan and having it submitted to the, um, to, the, to, to the building department, who would then forward it to the ARB, 
and you would be re restricted from re removing anything on the site until that, that was approved. But I think that's a great idea. So that's just so let me just so that's that's what the draft is here, and then we should be we should talk about what what we think makes sense. And I, I then think probably we have four different. Uh, I, I think it's a great that. idea. But I think that what we should do, though, we should try to incorporate right. uh, some standards for the landscaping plan right. to make sure that the landscaping plan that are prepared are prepared, you know, according to uh, let's say by a licensed. A landscape architect, or mm -hmm. somebody who actually is more than just. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Do they? Does the survey normally identify, or do they not necessarily identify landscape? No, they don't necessarily. Identify. They don't actually. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. yeah. I think I the quality of what the, uh, what is proposed for the future landscaping right. needs to be done by, you know, up to. Certain standards, right? I, a couple of comments. One, I agree that right. whatever, and I agree it's a it's a difficult issue because you right. uh, you know the person who wants to go in their backyard and cut down a diseased tree right. and not have to go through a permit process is totally understandable. And then the fact that we're losing right. entire lots with trees is also an issue. So right. the balance, but I do agree that the. If we could come up with something just simple and easy to understand, we'll help. Right, right. And uh, I was concerned that the initial draft, at least, was so complicated that it's going to be very hard to administer. Um, there's copies here if anyone wants to look at it. But um, so that's I, I think going to be a little bit of the balance of how do you, you know, I, you know, obviously the concern is that someone would buy a house and then tear everything down before they applied for a building permit, and I guess that is possible. Although it costs money to take trees out, so I, um, it's not cheap to actually do that type of thing. I think the, the problem would be if, I, if, if you're a, you know, a builder, you're going right. to need to have this law, you're going to say, okay, great, well, make sure we cut the trees down before we apply. Right. So right. it's, it's going to be difficult, and that's this is the, just difficult issues. Right. I think we could possibly also incorporate, there is a program from the EPA, it's called WaterSense, that, uh, that has certain standards when, with irrigation systems, that the irrigation systems need, need to be done in a certain way or designed in a certain way. And I think that's also something that maybe we could either mandate for properties over a certain size, or for when systems are over a certain size, that they be designed according to the WaterSense standards. Right. You know, that also because it has an impact over the overall community, especially in the small, in the village it proper, where where people who use the actual the water from the Suffolk County Water Authority for their uh, irrigation system, you know, they all come down at the same time, and there's a, right. a drop in pressure. Right, right. The other thing I noticed is I was watching a lot that's close to my house as right. it was developed, and um, it had, you know, trees this big on it. Um, so, obviously it's a shame to see them go, um, but as I kind of studied it, it seemed to me that the trees that were in the, the side lot or outside of the building envelope were the most critical ones, because in right. particular it happened to have been a tree that was this big right. that was on the lot line that blocked the house next right. door from the new house. Right. I'm sure the neighbors, and I know the neighbors are not happy that tree is gone, so it might be more beneficial to everyone if, if the ARB looked more strictly at, and I think they do already, at things that were had a shielding mm -hmm. effect versus right. obviously if it's in the middle of your buildable area and you want to put a pool in, it's going right. to be a different condition. Right. Right. Yeah, you know, I think we're just coming up to speed with, uh, right. with, you know, certainly I love trees, so right. yes. it's right up my alley. <laughs> 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 That's right, so you should definitely be. Right. Exactly. And as far as you know, landscape plans certainly by a licensed landscape architect, right, right, you know, right, you should yes. be mandated. Mm -hmm. right. Because I, I'm not yeah. so sure that the ARB really have the the expertise to right. review it. So they need right. to be guided by a licensed professional right. or a knowledgeable person in right. the landscaping right. field to say yes, these are you know indigenous right. species. Right. Yes, right. they're not going to create any issues. Yes, this you know, and so forth. Right. Right. Absolutely. Right. Proper. Right.
Any comments? Thoughts? I have just a question. Do we have yeah. any other draft text from that we that from other municipalities that we need to look at? Um, it, they had, um, and I can get that around. So they had, they had pro, pro, pro provided some draft text from, um, I think it was the village of Muddentown and Roslyn Harper. Mm -hmm. I think it was. Um, those texts were. Um, you know, very much what they use as the model for what they did draft, which in, in both cases does provide any time you tear down a lot tree or disturb vegetation, you have to go through a process. The, I think, you know, my concern is that in both those cases, those are villages where the amount of, cons uh, uh, of construction and activity is considerably less than here. Yeah. Um, so in Muddittown, for example, which I think is maybe 100 homes, 150 homes, you know, it's a lot easier for someone to, to do that. I think given my, you know, one of the biggest concerns I have is given the volume of what's happening here, how do we get a process that's actually ma manageable? But, but yes, though they have, and I can get, get those around. Um, so they're both very specific, and they both certainly provide for any time that you would take down a tree or change and make a significant change in vegetation. You have to, in both cases, apply to the building the department. And are we addressing any possible uh, restriction on the height on, of the privates along the street? Well, this one hedges? is much more tied to... This, much, this, is, this, this particular provision is really about um, the what you need to com comply with before you take some something out. It's much less about what you put in. So this is a provision to control your ability to actually remove things from the site. And there's, other, there's obviously a lot of other, there's currently some and we can certainly add. There's the other parts of the text, of the zoning text that talk about what you can put in and that's under the, the, um, <coughs> the mandate of the AR, ARB now. So, but this is really much more about your ability to remove things from a site. But I think we should open a discussion right. to possibly limiting the height of the right. hedges in, on right. the street. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it has an impact on the streetscape, on everybody who drives and walks around. You know, I mean, personally, I think mm -hmm. eight feet provides you privacy. Mm -hmm. Ten feet is more, but when you have like fourteen foot high hedges, there's no. So it only creates a shadow on the street, prevents any growth on the street. Right. There's right. no real purpose. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. So can, can sorry. Yeah, I, I think that I don't know if there are that many conditions like that. But right, but there are. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I think if people could go through through this, and you know, we'd like to try to begin to send something back to the trustees. You know, unfortunately, hearing a lot about this. I guess from a privacy right. standpoint, right. though, you know, about screening, right. you know, I enjoy when there's a beautiful streetscape and right. properties open right. back and we have those vistas across there. But then the other side of it, certainly the neighborhood that we live in, the community mm -hmm. that we live in, right. and we all thrive in, you know, a lot of people enjoy and love their privacy. Right, right, right. So, right. you know, I think there's a balancing act if right. we start imposing yep. Yes. Yep. But, uh, privacy, but I think that eight feet, let's say, then it's privacy. But once you start to have like cypresses that are like 14 feet high. And, and Mark, are you just talking about along the street? Along the street, just along the street. So not on the, on the other no, borders no, no, of the lot? No, not the borders right. of the lot. The okay. borders, are, that's, yeah. but it's really just along the street because the street is what everybody enjoys. Right. Right. Yeah. So that, that's the idea. Yeah. I mean, I think this is a... This is going to be an interesting balance. So how do you balance people's ability to do what they want in their lots and not have them have to go through a process every time? And, but at the same time, you know, right. cover things. That, I mean, I think on a lot of streets, people are, I mean, there's two different things going on. You know, as we talked about, you know, we're seeing basically now is really standard operating procedure with new houses being built, people just taking everything out of the lot. Yes. Um, and that is a dramatic impact on the street. And then the second thing that's been happening is people have been taking down very large trees. Um, 
And that's, I think a lot of people have been really back to a lot of older streets where suddenly very, very large streets are coming down. I mean, I have, I actually personally don't have as much of an issue with the height of the, the hedge or the thing is, but I, I do think that, you know, the species sometimes of what's being put in is not always great. I'm not sure you can legislate that, but right. maybe if there was even recommendations as to mm -hmm. desirable local species, right. species right. that are hardy. Right, right, right. Yes, I'm just because <clears throat> what you're concerned about on the street front, I know there's a number of houses where they put in a bigger house next to it and then they put in the 14, 18 foot trees between the two houses, which is the reverse of the privacy issue. Right. But there's nothing more depressing than that suddenly finding 15 away, feet away from you with this big green wall. And it's usually on the south side of your property. Right. So it removes the sun right. exactly right. from half right. your property. I think it's just as important as the streetscape. Right. Exactly. And yeah, I think it's something about, that should yeah. be done. Right. Because the streetscape and the side, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right, so let's, if we can go through this and maybe also yeah. the last meet, next meeting, people could come back with what they propose. Yeah. This, I think people would really like to, the trustees would like to get something from us in terms of what we would re recommend on this. Um, I just wish there were less pages. I know, and I, this is this is this is this is a um, I think it's an eight or nine page summary of what was a forty page document. So right. Okay. Maybe we have to keep yeah. keep keep yes. uh, working at it to get it shorter. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, a big advocate for the less. And I, I guess one general comment I would make, and it a very good point. It, so what we've generally been trying to do with everything we write is make it as easy to administer as possible, because we know that. The easier it is to administer, the more the building department is actually able to administer, and also the more people feel they're treated fairly because there's less interpretation. So we should try as much as we can with this to do the same. Um, so, anybody have anything else they want to raise tonight? This report came from where? So um, there's a um, there's a village group whose name I'm forgetting. I apologize. Um, but there was some. Uh, Roger Blau or, or, or organized a number of village neighbors who did some work looking at um, ordinances in other villages on Long Island, and they did a they made a proposal to the trustees at the trustees meeting, I believe, at the end of July, um, with a draft, um, which was I believe about a 40 page draft of. Um, a very elaborate tree, tree and um, and vegetation ordinance. We took that and tried to summarize it and make it a more stream streamlined uh, process, and then also uh, f focused it on when someone was was applying for a uh, permit anyway. Um, and I think Mark's idea is a very good idea, which is you know when someone is applying for a building permit, have them include a plan from a landscape, a world landscape architect that shows. Um, and so, you know, what I've seen in some other villages, what, what is very typical is when you do that, if you're proposing to take down, for example, certain trees, you have to say, explain why that tree is in the way of the house, as opposed to just being easier not to have to deal, deal with. So, you know, you're right. Ellen. So very often it will say, you know, if the tree is where, then the lot, the, the house is placed in the lot, then you're able to take the tree down. But if you're just taking the tree down because you don't want to deal with it, that's not going to be approved. Um, so it does require people to think of first before they do this wholesale clearance. Um, okay. Anything else? Yes. Why don't you want to talk about Nancy Road? Well, let me actually give a little bit of background. Um, so um, there was a proposal that was um, advanced by a number of um, property owners on Nancy Road. Um, which is currently uh, the uh, a um, an office district under the village zoning. Um, although there's a number of um, not not non -com uh, pre existing non conforming retail uses along the street, <coughs> um, and they had they 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 had asked that um, the zoning be changed to allow retail uses. Um, there was a study done by Nelson Pope and Borges, which was paid both by the Village and by the uh, pra, pra, 
pro pro property owners, they, they, they called for the ability to create special exception uses for limited retail, um, no less than, um, no, no more than um, 5,000 square feet in any uh, building and no individual store or more than 2,500 square feet, and along with a number of other items. Um, we spent um, many months talking about it. Um, this was a rare case, I would say, where the commission was unable to um, come to a, con a, a consent census. Um, there was a lot of concern about, uh, there was an understanding of the pro property owners um, feeling that they should be able to make more economic use of their land, um, but there was also a lot of concern, I think, on the, the mission about the impact that opening up the street for more retail would have on the village center. Um, and there was a proposal that I would say the property owners did not have evidence a lot of interest in, but um, there was a proposal that perhaps a more, um, a better way of looking at the street would be um, really um, if the, the potential for redeveloping sites in that street for attached or uh, multifamily exactly. housing. Um, that's what we reported to the trustees in, I think it was um, July, when they had the, um, when the, um, when the report from um, the uh, Nelson Pope was pre 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 presented to the trustees, um, and there's been a lot of conversation since about it, so. Right. Just as background. And I think right. as that uh, one of the limiting factors for multifamily was the wastewater. Correct. And now that with the, with the approval of the enhanced treatments, maybe it be, it's becoming more viable to do multifamily right. semi-detached right. in that right. area. And right. I think it may be a better use than actually trying to create uh, more retail. I mean, our retail in the village is going. But I don't think uh, it needs any competition or it needs can, you know, you know. And I think that was, because uh, I it, uh, ended up having to read the report, right. the, or the consultant wasn't there, but I think the, if I remember the issues were impact on village center, Correct. traffic, um, the, just the uh, type of use at the gateway entrance to the village. Right. But I do know that there are those issues with the, uh, with septic and doing residential, and then of course there's you know questions to the you know use it of the lots the right size and so on and so forth. Right. Right. But right. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's interesting, I think, in part is um, you know as the demographics of the village have have continued to change. I think what we've seen recently is um, increasing interest in. Um, a housing type that had been built in the village many years ago but hadn't been built for a long time, which is attached housing. Um, and so we've seen things like Bishop's Pond, where there's been a lot of interest in that kind of housing. Um, and, you know, the North Sea Road is an interesting area because it really is within walking distance of the middle of the yeah, village. Exactly. village. So, um, you know, I, I, I think the concern I think we had in part was the, the, uh, the Property owners were not enthused by that approach, um, and, and I agree. In part, it was because they were concerned that get, without a sewer, it was not going to be possible exactly. to get <clears throat> more housing approved. Um, so, to the extent that the sewer goes ahead, or to the extent that there's other ways to deal with the drainage, yes. it might there may be more openness to that. Um, so, I think something we're going to keep watching. Right. The other thing I should mention, just as an aside, is. Um, a project that seems to refuse to die. Um, uh, so uh, Tucko Center, um, which we thought was gone. Um, we, we, the, the Planning Commission took a very strong stand. We, we, we both wrote a letter to the Suffolk County Planning Commission and testified at their hearings. Um, we were, I think, reasonably pleased when the Planning Commission rec recommended against the town. Uh, 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 approving the application for a change in zone. It is one of the more interesting applications I've seen because new buildings continue to be built, including in the last six months, along County Road 39 in compliance with highway zoning. Um, so 
usually when you ask for change in zone, you have to show that you can't use the current zoning. And they continued in their lab, the lab, in their application last month, they've said once again that the current zoning doesn't work, which given the building is being built maybe 200 yards from there, is a little hard to understand, but be that as it may, um, they have applied again. Um, and uh, the town has moved their application forward to the county planning commission again. Um, and I believe October 5th is the hearing. I doubt there'll be a vote taken at that hearing. They tend to, you know, act over time. Uh, but just so everyone's aware of it, I think we'll probably once again remind the county why we think it's a bad idea to create a major shopping center, a major that street has a lot of use by um, village um, residents. They had one again. I would say one of the reasons it did not go through last time is they had one of the more well. They had a traffic report which their own consultant, before he was muzzled, said made absolutely no sense to him. Um, so <laughs> um, that's, that somehow the cars all disappeared um, when they went into the shopping center and never came out. Um, but um, you know, again, I think we're going to make a strong stand that we don't think it's a, an a appropriate right. addition to the highway. So, oh, can I ask a question? Yeah. I read in the newspaper about this, and it said something about they didn't consider it a new application, they considered it a variation of the old one? Yes, they... And that made a difference as to how you could deal with it? Well, um, I think, it? so there is a provision um, in the, the way the... Doesn't affect, it doesn't affect things in the village, but does, it does affect the town. The, the, any, uh, any, um, any change in zone in the town needs to be approved by the planning com, com, mm -hmm. com, com, commission. Certain changes require what's called a super majority at the planning co commission to approve, which they were unable to get last time. Um, the, um, the, the, the developer of the shopping center has both raised issues about the ability of some of the members of the planning co commission to vote. He's claiming there's conflicts of interest mm -hmm. in the planning commission, but beyond that, um, there's some talk that they, they think maybe it doesn't really require a super majority. Okay. I think there's five members of the planning commission. So that's, a, that's a big deal, how yes. the technicality Correct, is. it is. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, I think it would also have a terrible impact on traffic. In the right. Park. Mm -hmm. would, people would then start to go through the village. Right. I mean, if you were going to change the zoning on the highway to allow this, if you, for some reason you wanted to do that, this seems like an odd site to do it. I mean, you'd want to do it on a site where the traffic impact could be fairly contained within the site. Right. This site actually very much does not have that aspect. The site is at a corner. It's a difficult corner now yeah. um, and would no doubt become a much more difficult corner um, yes. at that time. Um, and the traffic would clearly spill over onto the, the side street. So even if you wanted to change the zoning, it's hard to imagine this would be the site you'd pick. Um, but what's really sort of, to me, has been always sort of very hard to understand about it is the current zoning is working. <laughs> People are still building and, and, and making major investments using the current zoning. So, you know, just to compare it to North Sea Road, where the argument they're making, which at least is a fair argument, is no one's really done anything on North Sea Road because they found it very hard to use the current zoning, and so there hasn't been major investment on North Sea Road in many years. You can't say that on the highway. I mean, there's there's literally projects now under con, under cons, cons, construction on the highway, so it has not been a case where the zoning has stopped con, cons construction from happening. So. Anything else?